Okay, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Zen Grids and then we'll get into the demo. Um, it's called Beyond 960, the 960 meaning pixels, of course. Um, it was a time when 960 was a, a standard because screens were no more than 1,024 pixels. And so 960 fit in quite nicely, but now there's countless number of screen widths, as I'm sure you'd agree. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is, uh, first I'm going to talk about responsive, what it means. Uh, most of you know that, but it's got a little twist of its own. Also, what it means to be content first. Uh, then I'll do a quick demo. And then the last one, it'll be like a pseudo demo for device testing, mainly because we can't all test devices here. Uh, we're not all on the, on the same network, so it's a bit tricky. Um, so what exactly is responsive? A lot of people go for the mobile first um, mentality, uh, which is fine. But what happens when you have you know, wristwatches coming up with screens in the future, right? You can't call it mobile first anymore. Or your Samsung fridge, which has a little panel, you might be able to browse from there as well. So mobile first doesn't really, you know, mean anything. It has to be responsive. Now, you'd agree that that writing you can all read, but there's a lot of white space around it too, which is sometimes what responsive designs end up looking. If it's 960, you have a lot of white space that you're not really maximizing. Um, you know, if you do that, well, that's a different effect altogether. Um, both words mean the same, but the effect is quite different. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to say. When you have responsive, go both ways. Don't just go for smaller screens. Also maximize the space for the big screen and use it instead of just having white panels of space that's not being used. And there are, there are a few designers out there that are maximizing really well. One of them is Mark Bolton. I'm sure you know the name. Uh, he helped redesign Drupal.org, and if you look at Mark Bolton Design uh, website, it's, it's amazing, right? It's, it's great storytelling, and it maximizes the full screen. Um, uh, the next screen, we're going to talk about content. I hope the people at the back uh, and the front can see it. Um, oh, um, you guys can't see it. I assume that, um, seeing that it was a projector, you might not need the content. My assumption, right? Um, and we do that uh, on mobiles. I see content disappear. You know, something that's visible on, on the widescreen is no longer on the mobile screen. Um, one of the websites that does it actually is Acquia. <laughs> um, you know, in, in the slideshow, there's a place where you can put your website and it rates it on accessibility and, and performance and then it gives you a, a thing. And I was with someone, uh, a potential client, and I, I wanted to do it on his website on the mobile. Uh, on my iPhone, it wasn't available, right? So um, that's what you end up with. Um, obviously, this is better because now you can see it. Um, so that's basically just the points I wanted to highlight. Uh, we're going to go straight into the demo now really quickly because I don't have that much time. Uh, the demo is going to be basically about Zen grids. I'm sure you've used it, but uh, I'm not going to use the Zen theme. I'm going to show you that it can be applied to any uh, static HTML site very, very quickly. And you've got uh, a grid system that's very, very easy to use. So my HTML really just looks like this. Uh, it's just um, for a test. I'm using uh, Slipsum, not Ipsum, Lauren, because it's Samuel L. Jackson Ipsum, uh, just for fun. We also share similar hairstyles from time to time. Um, so it's just really four divs, um, or five, or ho ho however many. Uh, not an issue. And my directory structure looks like this. It's very, very simple. It's just that HTML file that you saw. And the only other style sheet that I created was the SAS file. And the only thing you really need for Zen Grids is this config.rb, right? Because it's, uh, it's a Ruby gem, uh, Zen Grids. And you can get that from the zengrids.com website. You just download it from there. You just put it in there. If you were to open it, you'll see that it's got uh, a few settings for how you want to produce your, your CSS and which folder, right? Uh, but you don't need to adjust anything. You just put it in there. and the styles looks like this. Um, forget this bit. This is just adding colors so you can see it. Um, you just, yep. Oh, it's not working. That's weird. 
sorry. Um, anybody know how to make it? I tried that. I tried Command Plus. There we go. Command Shift Plus. Ha <laughs> ha. Right, so all you need really is to import the Zen. You have the config.rb, you import the Zen, and that's all you need to do. You can start using the Zen grids on a static HTML website. Uh, I set the column count to one as a default for smaller screens. And of course, my gutter width, which is 20, you can make it 10, and all that does is divides it by two and puts you know, 10 on each side, or if it's 10, then five on each side, basically. Uh, I say 100% because it's gonna be fluid. You can give it a set fixed width as well. And then I start uh, basically utilizing Zen grid item based Zen grid container, which is for the main container. Um, all these divs that were on my HTML, this command says they share similar properties. That's all it does. Um, but this is where you start using it. Um, I say it's one column wide and starting at one. All of them are one, 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 basically, right? The Zen clear just acts like clearing a float. That's all it is, right? And so, in effect, this is what you get. Right, it's just one column. Uh, that 20 gutter width gets divided by 10 and 10 there. So now I go and I start putting my breakpoints. And how do you put your breakpoints? I use this tool called the Web Developer Tool made by Chris Pederick. Uh, and what that does is gives you a whole bunch of stuff here. The one I like to use is just say display window size and title. And if you look at the title, uh, it tells you how wide in pixels it's going, right? And so looking at that up here tells you when my design breaks. I figure so far it's so good, and each design will, will differ, but just for demo purposes, I've just used text. But when it gets to about there, I think it's getting too wide to read. The measure of the text is too wide, and so I change it, right? And you can just keep going on and on, and it keeps changing to take up the whole screen. Um, and the code for that is very, very similar to each other. I put my breakpoints there. I change the column counts because then I can play with it. I can divide it into however uh, I want. Um, I won't go into too much detail because they're very similar. Um, but the one thing you can do is, if you notice, this footer C is appearing last because this is the order the HTML is output on. But that doesn't mean I can't have it here. Right, with Zen grids. You just say which column you wanted to start, right? And you can totally change that. Uh, and that's content first, because now you can decide what content is more important, right? So that's a very quick demo of that. Um, next thing I wanna, just the last thing to do is um, testing on multiple devices. We're not actually gonna do that here, but I'll give you three pointers how to do it, and you can try it at home, and it works beautifully. Um, what I do is, uh, I just used, uh, this is my disclaimer, I used MAM Pro to handle my, my AMP stack, but I'm sure it'll work on, on anything else. So this will be specific to my stack here. Um, you create a symbolic link, and because I'm using MAMP, I go to MAMP HDDocs, that's where my local host runs from. So I've created a symbolic link uh, pointing to my actual website there, my Drupal site, CPW, and the link is cpw.local. Right, you find out your IP address, very simple, and, and then you can open it on any device, right, locally. So you're actually accessing your local website without having to download iOS simulators. I mean, how do you do that if you have Linux? I'm not even sure if that's supported, right? So any device, you just run off your local um, thing on there. Um, and that's it, really. That's all I had to show you this evening. If you have any questions, just come and see me, and we can talk uh, about it more. Thanks. Questions? Sorry, questions. No, you, go. you can sit behind me there. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, presumably, um, with being able to set the different uh, set the grids presumably wherever you want, you can you could actually reorder your HTML, and that wouldn't affect um, the actual output. Then is that? A 
I'm not that sure makes what sense. You mean. So, like, so for example, with the example you had with your footer, and then it was in a different area. If you took that same footer div and put it at the top of your HTML markup, it wouldn't affect the output. It wouldn't affect the output. What do you mean? Still actually, based off of Zen Grids, would still end up being in the same place. Or would the order of your HTML? Still no, the order of the HTML stays the same. So you order it uh, in 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 importance, right? So actually, the Zen theme has the navigation right at the bottom. It starts up with content first, right? And then uh, it uses absolute positioning. That's the the the, the vanilla um, Zen theme, and then puts it on top. Is that what you're saying? What happens if you change the order of those um, grid HTML elements in the HTML file? Will Zen Grid still appear the same? Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but it has to be on the same structure, right? So if you have a div that's embedded down two, three divs, and suddenly you're putting it up there, that could have adverse effects. But I don't know how many cases you'd want to do that anyway. You'd want to structure your HTML, you know, uh, reasonably sensibly and then it should be fine but you can structure your HTML so I, I can have that footer appear anywhere it doesn't matter where it is in the HTML because uh, I'm using just a class or an ID so it doesn't matter that's it We're not allowed to. No. The no. Okay. Does anyone have a display port to HDMI or to the adapter? Like the adapter? Awesome. No, like a this sorry. Oh, really? Yeah, not a Mac display port. Uh, not a Mac or a regular display port. No, How do you convert a standard, a standard layout, a non-responsive, and you put Zen Grids in for the first time? Does that require a lot of rethinking, or can you just put Zen Grids in and just start morphing it organically? To apply Zen Grids, it's very easy. You just include that, download that config RB file, and say import Zen, and suddenly you can use it. Right? Um, everything will appear if you don't use anything else but just that, everything will appear like your HTML is set out in hierarchy, right? So it's just like a normal output. Yeah, I mean, like, if you've got views and you've got blocks and stuff like that, and, I mean, that was a simple example with the HTML, HTML but if you've got a, a already, you know, panels, panels kind of layout, and it's already quite locked in, yep. I'm not just not familiar enough with it right, how yeah. complicated you, you is you can it override to you can override all the panel stuff but where you'd want to do is maybe have the one panel I've done websites where is everything is in the one panel but then I use Zen Grids to do my layout right that's how you might might approach it this is strictly just for for the layout Zen Grids Zen Grids is a CSS framework, if you will. So if you've already got a site and it's already themed with CSS, importing Zen Grids is not going to automatically make your site responsive. You would have to kind of rework your CSS to then do it. Um, but based off what Colin's saying, you can actually import Zen Grids and use it for part of your site or like part of your layout without completely yeah. eliminating all of your CSS. Am I correct on that? Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's very easy to implement. Um, and that controls your layout, your content first, and so forth. Yep. There's other stuff too. This is a very small part because I've only got 10 to 15 minutes. ZenGrids does a lot more because it's using Compass, um, SAS libraries, and so forth. So it has a lot more. But at its base, you just need that, and then you've got your functioning layout. Is that it? Cool. Thanks. Thanks.